Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most important problem in mathematics, which is the Gray Treeman hypothesis. Uh, it is a hypothesis uh, based on a function which is called Riemann zeta function, and we will be talking all about it. It's a millennium problem, which means uh, if you solve this problem, you will get a million dollar check from the Institute of Mathematics. Okay. So there are seven million dollar problems published by the Clay Institute. So if you uh, solve any one of them, you will be getting a check of one million dollar. And in these seven million dollar problem, the Pinyaka conjecture uh, was solved by this guy Grigori. He is a mathematician. He solved this problem in two thousand two, but he refused to take one million dollar from the Clay Institute. Uh, he said he did, did it for the maths, and uh, the paper was uh, peer reviewed and the uh, the problem is now considered as solved. Okay, so this was, this is now solved. Uh, this is a problem P versus NP problem, a programmable versus non-programmable pro uh, problem. Uh, it's a problem in computer science. Uh, maybe later we can talk about it also. Uh, but today uh, we're gonna talk about the Riemann hypothesis. Okay, the great Riemann hypothesis. This hypothesis was given by this guy Bernard Riemann. And he gave, published his paper in around 1800s, and uh, this hypothesis was the part of that paper, and uh, still haven't been solved. And uh, and this is the Riemann zeta function. It was used to call zeta function only, but after his paper, it's it's been called uh, Riemann zeta function. Uh, if you look closely, uh, this graph I will explain you later with some uh, animation and visualization. Uh, for now. This function, if you look closely, it's a summation of n is equals to 1 to n is equals to infinity, uh, 1 by n power n. Uh, <clears throat> this function expands like this, where the reciprocals of natural numbers to the power s are getting added up to infinity. Okay. Uh, it is a very easy looking function to understand the reciprocal of natural number to the power s are getting added up to infinity. But uh, actually, it's, uh, it's a lot more complicated and there have been a lot of research around it and uh, the whole prime numbers distribution, the gaps, the gaps between the prime number are based on this function only, the Riemann zeta function. Actually, by using this function, uh, Riemann found the prime number theorem, which is uh, n by log n, which is if you put the value of n, you will get the uh, number of prime number less than that n. Okay, like if you put seventeen the prime number before 17 we will get number of prime number before 17 we can find out by this formula okay this is called the prime number prime number theorem and this was based uh, this was based on the idea and it came from this equation only okay in this function the domain s is actually a complex number uh, complex number is a number which have a uh, real part uh, a is the real part here and an imaginary part which b iota is the uh, imaginary part iota is the root of uh, write it here iota is root of minus one so this function is not only limited to the real number we can uh, also put uh, complex number values in it so s is in form of a plus b iota so now we want to understand the series this uh, expansion uh, using some values of s we will put uh, s equals to one and see what the result is s equals to two and s equals to three okay so for s equals to one this is a hyperbolic series. Actually, this is a uh, this looks like a, a convergent series, but it's not a convergent series. It's actually a divergent series, and it uh, it tends to infinity. It looks if you look at the series closely, you will see every next term is less than the previous term. Okay, because they are reciprocal, and the denominator is getting bigger and bigger. So every next term is less than the previous term, and still the the series tends to infinity okay for zeta 2 zeta of 2 this this series was actually used to call uh, basal problem and it was uh, solved by one of the best mathematician ever the leonard euler and he found the value to be pi square by 6 and there's an interesting reason why pi shows up here and let me, maybe we can talk about it in a later video a zeta of 3 is not as such an interesting series, it is simply a series of uh, cubes of cubes of natural number getting uh, getting reciprocal and 
added till infinity okay it tends to this number it's a national number 1.202 and and this is all about the some values of the riemann zeta function we have checked for zeta of 1 zeta of 2 and zeta of 3 so now we'll be moving on the zeros of riemann zeta function a zero of a uh, function let uh, let be a function fx and let x1 be the zero of this function okay so what does it mean If x one is a zero of f of x, then f of x one will be equal to zero. मतलब any value uh, which makes the function uh, zero uh, is the zero of that function. Okay. In Riemann zeta function, we have zeta of s. S if s is a zero, it can be of two type: a trivial zero and a non-trivial zero. And we're gonna talk about it uh, both the types and understand what are the Difference between these type and what are these type? Okay. Trivial zeros. Zeta of s when s is one of minus two, minus four, minus six. These are called its trivial zeros. Okay. When s is in form of minus two n, where where n is greater than one, then all the values of s are in which which are in this form will be called trivial zeros of that function. Okay. Like minus two, minus four, minus six, minus eight, up like all the negative, basically all the negative even integer are the trivial zero of that function. Non-trivial zero. Any other uh, zero which is not in the form of which is not a trivial zero are called a non-trivial zero. Okay. So what does Riemann hypothesis basically states? It states that it states that the real part of every non-trivial zero of Riemann zeta function is half. Basically states that if we have a zeta function zeta of s and s is a non-trivial, not a trivial zero, non-trivial zero, which is uh, zero is not in form of minus two n. Okay. So if s is a non-trivial zero and then s will be always be in form of half plus b iota. Okay. So the Riemann hypothesis. Is uh, broadly consists of this statement only. Okay, this is the on, uh, only major statement in Riemann hypothesis. We just have to prove that the real part of the non-trivial zero of Riemann zeta function will be half only. Okay, if the hypothesis is correct, all the non-trivial zeros lie on the critical line consisting of complex number half plus iota b. Now we will be going to see some graph and visuals of Riemann zeta function and its graph and its polar graph, so we can get a better understanding of Riemann hypothesis. So let's get into it and see all the graphs. So now we are on the graph plane. Let this axis, this x-axis, be the axis of real number, and this axis be the axis of complex number. So all the complex number will lie on this axis. All the imaginary number will lie on this axis. And all the real number will lie on this axis. So every point in this graph will give a uh, distinct complex number. Okay, like imagine this be a iota, this is two iota, and this is three iota, like this. Okay. So if we have to find what this point represent, then we have to see that it has a uh, two unit distance from the real axis and uh, a three uh, three unit distance on the complex axis. So it, this point will represent. Two plus three iota, okay, like this. Try to understand the Riemann zeta function with some graph, okay. So as I told you before, the zeta of one is uh, infinite, okay. So the this line, the blue line, this is the graph of s, okay, the s s values. So what are we doing in this graph? This is a complex plane. Uh, since every point in this plane is represent a complex number, so this is a complex plane. And we are uh, using this plane to understand the values of s and its uh, implication on a Riemann zeta function. As we know, re zeta of one is uh, infinity. So, so what Riemann did actually is he gave the formula to find all the values of Riemann zeta function in this side of the plane, where the real part is. Greater than one, not equal to one, thus greater than one. Okay, this this line we don't have the all the values are infinity as we as we know zeta of one is infinity. 
all the value will be infinity and using this uh, this side of the plane he used a technique in mathematics called analytic continuation and he found all the values in this side of plane this side of plane means the all the where a is less than 0 okay this side in the right hand side of the plane we know all the values we used analytic continuation to find all the values in the left side of the plane also okay so as you know these are the trivial zeros uh, minus 2 minus 4 and they will minus 6 somewhere so this line right here is the critical line okay so all the number on this line will be in form of half plus b iota so what he said is if there exists a zero of Riemann zeta function in this plane 0 to 1 then all the uh, all the zero will must uh, will have to lie on this line only this line right here okay all the values must uh, should must lie on this line only and mathematician have checked around trillions of values in this plane to found any value which don't lie on this line what they found is for around a trillion zeros there is no value which don't exist on this line every zero of Riemann zeta function exists on this line and this line only okay so this is what the hypothesis claims so now i'll be showing you some polar graph of Riemann zeta function to see how for how many times and what value of b the Riemann zeta function gets zero and we will showing and we will be seeing some polar graph of Riemann zeta function here is the polar graph of Riemann zeta function in which in the y-axis it's a uh, zeta function and x-axis it's the value of s okay so uh, we have an option here to set the real part to half right now the real part is uh, equals to half if we, if i increase this the real part will equal to one okay right now uh, now i'm gonna set it to half and i will try to visualize what value for what value it's gonna intersect the origin and give the demon zeta function value as zero okay so right now the value is 10 iota where b is 10 so now we'll be increasing it and seeing for how which values of b it intersects zero and give Riemann zeta function value as zero okay 14 iota around 14 iota it gives a value of Riemann zeta function as zero you can you can see it intersecting at zero at 14 iota i have stopped right here and uh, if you continue it here it will again go to zero for some values and keep going to zero for multiple values mathematician have checked for around trillions of numbers and they found that uh, for uh, there exist an infinite number of these in the in the critical line okay and this is what the polar graph uh, will look like after you check for around 50,000 of values and you, you can see there are so many intersections at uh, zero and you can see there are so many intersections at zero so we can say that for so many values of uh, b it's intersecting zero and and that's what hypothesis claim if there exists a non-trivial zero it must be on a uh, line s is equals to half plus b iota okay mm, hope you understood the Riemann hypothesis and i will be seeing you in the next video thank you like, share and subscribe, please.